Welcome back to yet another episode of It's Always the Video Game's Fault. However, in this one, I gotta say, even though it is definitely a skewed video, it isn't really as bad as some of the other ones that we've covered. At least they understand some basic facts about video games, and some of them try to kind of, you know, show that it's not the video game's fault and that, you know, it's not a problem like they're saying it is. But even then, the whole video basically is very skewed in one direction, even though in some instances it tries not to be. But today we're going to be taking a look at a video from a company called AJ Plus. And the reason that I'm even doing this one is because yesterday, funny enough, on Twitter they posted a video talking about how video games were being used to recruit children into becoming Nazis, which... You know, as someone who's played video games since the age of three, I've never had this happen to me ever once. But, uh, yeah, they decided to take that one down. It was pretty funny, actually, how quickly, uh, since all that backlash kind of built up against them, they, they made sure to get rid of that one. There is, uh, no traces of that one to be seen. But, hey, if it ever comes back out, I will be making a video on that one because that is going to be a classic. But this one is also really good because... It, I guess, shows a little bit of a different perspective. I feel like with this little mini-series I've been doing, I've been kind of just showing ones where it's like, you know, they're like, video game bad, it make kid play Fortnite too long, and then they might kill. But this one, it kind of shows some real effects of video game addiction, which, you know, I I've always kind of ridiculed, but I mean, it is a real thing. You definitely can become addicted to video games. You can become a literally addicted to anything. You can be addicted to eating computer monitors, you know? I've seen on, like, I can't remember, it's like TLC, they had this weird show a while back. This woman was literally addicted to eating furniture and pillows and stuff, you know? It's not... It's not too far out there. However, they make it out like everyone who plays video games for more than an hour a week is addicted and that none of them have social skills or real lives. And it's very misleading and disingenuous, you know? So we're finally going to get kind of a fresh perspective in today's video. Anyways, I'm not going to hold this up any longer. Let's go ahead and get right on into it. A lot of people watch TV all day. I'd rather play video games. I'd probably say at least 50 hours a week. I try to keep like a healthy balance. My bigger issue, just besides the time, mm -hmm. was spending a lot of money, just spending and gambling in the games. Now the first guy made a really good point, okay? A lot of people watch TV all day, he just decides to play video games. Very good point, you know? I don't really see AJ Plus making a bunch of videos about how television, it's addiction rehabs and stuff like that. And then of course, yeah, spending a lot of money in the game is definitely a problem. But if you're buying like $400 a week in loot boxes and video games, you don't have a video game addiction, you have a gambling addiction. Those aren't necessarily the same thing. I mean, at the core, you're, you're addicted to something, but I mean, they're two totally different things. I understand that, you know, loot boxes are still part of a lot of video games. They're starting to become illegal. There's even a bill currently in, uh, in the United States being introduced. Uh, to make the loot boxes illegal in games that are rated E for everyone, to basically try and prevent children from gambling and stuff. You know, there's goods and bads to that bill. But at the heart of it all, that that's not a gaming addiction, if you are buying up all these loot boxes and whatnot, you know? So that, that's a little bit disingenuous right off the rip. The global market for games grew from $70 billion in 2012 to $122 billion in 2017. By comparison, global box office revenue for films in 2017 was $41 billion. Okay, so this is what I'm saying. You don't often see these types of videos actually show these facts, okay, that show, you know, the statistics of gaming. That's what I kind of like about this video in comparison to the other ones. I mean, this one actually kind of shows how gaming has grown. I mean, almost doubled in revenue over five years for any market worth, you know, dozens of billions of dollars. That's impressive. You take all the global box office revenue and even multiply it by itself a couple times and it still won't reach the level that gaming is bringing in. That's pretty good, but let's go ahead and go forward a little bit and see what else they have to say. I know when to step away. Because, like, I understand, like, some games, like, you know, they'll make me, like, really upset. It's like, okay, I need to step away. Do something else. See, this is just prime evidence that not everyone who plays video games has trouble managing their time and has trouble stepping away from video games. Video games are not these nightmare machines that cause people to just get sucked into them, you know? It, the whole thing, it, the video itself is apparently about how he wants to explore how gaming companies maximize, pro maximize profits off of addictive games and stuff like that, and the real-world effects of people getting addicted to these games, 
But, you know, it's so disingenuous because the vast majority of people who play video games don't have a problem, you know? One study estimated that 9% of teen gamers are addicted. With an estimated 2.6 billion people playing video games globally, it's not a limited issue. So think about that mathematically, okay? 9% of all people are apparently, by estimates, addicted to gaming, right? Okay, or, I'm sorry, teen gamers, okay? Which, you know, people under 18, according to this video, make up half of the gaming population. That means if 9% of that half is addicted to games, I mean, overall, you're not even talking about one out of every 10 teen gamers, okay? One out of every 10, basically, is addicted to video games. And that's the thing that these videos never establish. What does addicted to video games mean? Does that mean playing for three hours a week, five hours a week, 10 or more hours a week? Spending, you know, a certain criteria in games on microtransactions or on video games themselves? What, what is the guideline to being addicted to a video game? Or is there none and you just assume everybody who is a hardcore gamer is addicted to video games? That's the thing these people never establish in these videos, okay? And it just, it number one, it doesn't benefit their point any because, you know, how are you going to prove anyone of these people are addicted? What, he plays 50 hours a week? What if he's a streamer, you know? I probably could play 50 hours a week too if I was a Twitch streamer very easily considering they stream pretty much like a whole shift. A lot of streamers stream for like 8 to 12 hours a day, and they're making more than doctors. So, I mean, it, it, it's a job. At the end of the day, that's a job. So, they use that statistic like it's real scary. 9% of teen gamers are addicted. However, we do not dictate what addicted means. We have no definition for video game addiction, other than some random definition made up by people who don't play video games or understand video games at the slightest but 9% of teen gamers are addicted to video games. That means that not even one out of every 10 teen gamers who only make up 50% of the gaming community are even addicted to video games. You spent eight weeks here. Yeah. I was playing on average between like 12 to 16 hours a day. So I would just be, I would either be playing video games, watching porn, watching some show, or I would be sleeping, that was it. So right off the bat, 12 to 16 hours per day for somebody who is not streaming or making it their job, yeah, that, that's pretty insane. I mean, that only leaves you, what, eight hours to sleep, you know, eat, go take a shower, go hang out with your family, go to work. If that is a consistent behavior and it's not like your job, well, even then, I'd say 16 hours a day is your job is probably pretty much an addiction as well. I, I would say, yes, you are addicted to the game, but he also, he, fact, it's, he factors in three other things that apparently also took up that time. Watching porn, sleeping, watching some shows, or playing video games. So, three out of four of those things are not video games that are taking up that time. So, okay. So, he didn't overall just have a gaming addiction. It sounds like he just had an addiction to, like, his impulses to play video games and to beat his meat and to sleep and watch TV all day. That's not a gaming addiction, I'm sorry. Being addicted to watching TV, beating your meat, playing games, it's not just simply a gaming addiction. There is an underlying cause there. There's something else going on besides just being addicted to video games when that's all that you do, you know? I mean, if he was just playing games for 16 hours a day and doing nothing else, yes, that's gaming addiction. But, I mean, apparently he had plenty of other, you know, areas of expertise, should I say. Did you feel anxious, shaky? Very much so. There, there's very, very real physical withdrawal symptoms to video gaming. How serious a problem is this? I was so depressed that I started researching how to kill myself on my phone because I couldn't get up and go to the computer to do so. You do realize, though, that all these other symptoms, like the shakiness and the anxiousness, those are attributed to very common mental health and mental illnesses and stuff like that. that that's not just a video game addiction that can cause you being anxious and shaky. Physical withdrawal symptoms, okay? I personally have never felt a physical withdrawal symptom. Like, I, I stopped playing Call of Duty for 15 minutes and, and go outside to trim some bushes or something. And I have to stop because, like, my arms and back are just convulsing violently because I haven't played Call of Duty in the last 10 minutes. You know, come on now. And he started researching how to kill himself on his phone, but apparently that's the gaming addiction there. He, he's not very clearly suicidal 
doesn't have like depression, anxiety, suicidal tendencies, nothing like that. Nothing nothing else going on. It has to just be the gaming addiction. He couldn't get up off the couch to go to the computer, so I'd love to know how he was just playing video games all day if he can't even go to the computer to play the video game, unless he was addicted to mobile games. You know, it come on. It really? It's the video's game's fault that he's uh suicidal? Is that how it's working now? Huh, okay. I guess that's how it works. I, I must just not be aware. There are concerns about the effect of games on kids, since nearly half of gamers are under 18 and mostly male. And teens who spend 5 hours a day gaming are 71% more likely to be at risk for suicide than those who spend less than one. But is there an underlying reason that isn't gaming addiction? That's what they're not mentioning here, okay? Well, these teens are very much more likely to be suicidal if they sit around and play video games and mope in their bedroom all day. There is another, there's no underlying cause. It's just the video game itself, right? Like, come on, man. This is just, it's so stupid. It's like saying that the video games are the root cause for these kids being more suicidal. Is there a reason that maybe they want to sit inside and play video games all day and don't want to go out and socialize or anything? Is it the video game or is it the fact that they're antisocial, or is it the fact that they're just suicidal and depressed? Why don't you do a little bit more research and like actually figure out what's wrong with the kids instead of just blaming something that they can't, you know, really make a scapegoat out of, you know? Video games are not the scapegoat for your child being suicidal, okay? I'm sorry, they're just not. Figure out what the problem is, figure out what's going on at home, figure out what's going on in his personal life, be a parent, okay, and figure out what's wrong with him. Don't allow your kid to play video games for nine hours a day if you think he's gonna go kill himself. It just kind of spiraled out of control until I was gaming 16 hours a day. I just find it really magical that they all just game 16 hours a day. That's just, that's the benchmark number. They don't game for just 9 hours a day, or 7 and a half, or 13. It's always 12, 16, you know, somewhere in that range. I don't play games at all. Um, if it's digital and gaming, I don't touch it. Um, so I don't even allow myself, like, Sudoku on my phone. And you know what, if that actually is what he needs and that's what's going to help him, I'm all for it, man, okay? I'm not saying that the problem doesn't exist, I'm saying that the way that people like this are portraying it is incorrect, okay? And that that's not right, okay? Because it, it paints a bad picture on people who don't have this problem. The gaming industry went to what's called free-to-play, which basically you get the game and you can play the game. That's Bill Grosso, a gaming industry insider who founded Scientific Revenue to help companies maximize payments within their games. If you think about what a really bad game is, it's like the game that is completely non-addictive. Designing a good game is inherently trying to design something that people want, will want to come back to, will feel compelled to come back to. So this guy is apparently a video games insider, right? He's an analyst for the entire, I guess, industry itself, but uh, isn't aware that most AAA games are still not free to play. Of course, you know, there are a lot of popular free to play games. There's games like Fortnite out there, of course. I'm, I'm not gonna disagree with that, but to say, oh, the whole gaming industry has gone free to play is very not true. I mean, you would think that somebody who's apparently an expert in this would actually know what he's talking about, but... And to say that a bad game is one that doesn't addict people and get people wanting to come back consistently is also very wrong. You know, I'm looking at two games right now, two of the greatest video games ever made, The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask and Wind Waker. Both are two of the greatest games of all time, two of my favorite video games of all time. You know, I play them every once in a great while, you know, I, I've, I've had them for a long time now. I don't play them nine hours a day every day, you know, it's not designed to get me addicted. You know, come on now. A lot of games definitely are, though. A lot of games definitely are designed to get you addicted, okay? But to pretend that that's how the whole gaming industry is, is wrong. So, if you're gonna be an expert, be an expert. By 2016, Grand Theft Auto V had sold more than 60 million copies, but the free version, GTA Online, made more than $500 million on in-game microtransactions. I would love to know where this free version of Grand Theft Auto V is because, well, there isn't one. There is no free to play version of Grand Theft Auto Online. It's not free to play. You you literally could have asked anyone who's ever played the game before and they would have told you you have to buy Grand Theft Auto V to get GTA Online. They couldn't even get somebody to like fact check this. They couldn't get anyone on their team who's ever played a video game ever to watch an 11 minute video and figure out if what they're saying is complete horse shit. You couldn't ask any of these video game addicts who interviewed. You couldn't ask anyone who's ever played a game. I mean, most people who've played video games I know have played Grand Theft Auto V, and you can't get this one right? Come on, man. I think loot boxes are straight up gambling. Um, it's something that 
keeps people coming back, keeps people grinding in the game, playing it longer and longer. And because you can't just buy what it is you want, you have to keep forking money over. Last year, one game company caught so much flack for the practice that they've advertised a game this year with a simple message. I completely agree with him in this. I think that loot boxes are very predatory and that companies that abuse them definitely abuse them solely for gambling profit. Okay, it's totally gambling. You're putting money in to basically a slot machine. It operates in the same exact fashion, looks the exact same as a slot machine, hoping to get something, but possibly, well, realistically, probably never getting that thing. There's no cap on how many of these things you can buy. You could put $180,000 into it in a day if your bank allowed you to and you wanted to. They wouldn't look at you like anything was different, okay? that It's gambling. However, to pretend that every video game has loot boxes is stupid. Hell, even Grand Theft Auto, the game you couldn't even fact check but decided to include doesn't have loot boxes and never did. You know, it's so easy to fact check these things, yet this whole video has so many of these very major and blatant errors that nobody thought about or even fact checked. So it'll be like 300, 400, and then it's like, okay, well, I'll keep going until I get it. And like, if I don't get it after a couple hundred dollars, then I, I would get like really depressed and sometimes I would just keep going. Like I already spent 400, well, I'm just gonna spend until I, until I get it. Well, once again, okay, you don't have a gaming addiction if you're spending all this money on loot boxes and then getting depressed when you don't get what you wanted. That's called gambling addiction. That's been around longer than video games have existed. Those are not the same thing, okay? You can get addicted to playing a video game and play it 16 hours a day. You can get addicted to wanting to operate slot machines and get rich or get items off of it, okay? But that doesn't make them the same thing, okay? Just because a video game allows you to gamble doesn't mean that it's a gaming addiction. Three out of four American children have access to a smartphone, and nearly half of American parents believe their kids are addicted to mobile devices. Three out of four American children have a mobile device, and half of American parents think that their children are addicted to their phones. You know, this is an awesome game that adults play. I think they almost, like, get excited when they get to victimize themselves and their children. Like, oh, I bought, I bought Timmy one of them goddamn iPhones he wanted so bad, and now he's addicted to it because I won't put my foot down as a parent and make him get off his phone in video games. It isn't a video game or a phone's fault that you're a dumbass and you can't raise your kid. Okay, if you don't want your kid addicted to video games, quote unquote, then either A, don't buy them the game, B, take the video game away from them, C, implement some sort of like reward system, like hey, you do good in school, you can play video games all you want. It's really not that hard, okay? It really isn't that hard if you actually are a parent, you understand? I think that's where we're going to end this one, guys. Thank you for watching. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're brand new around here on my channel. Follow me over on Twitter at Subtoptimus. I post memes, thoughts, and updates over there. It's a surefire way to get notifications of all my newest content. Join the Discord down below. Lots of great things going on down there. Thank you to my channel members for your $5 a month. Your support helps my channel tremendously. If you'd like to gamble on some loot boxes here for some Optimus gear, you can do so by hitting the join button down below or the become a channel member link in the description. Just kidding. It's just for channel members and stuff. But with that being said, until my next video, guys, this is Optimus being addicted to a video game and going to rehab and signing out.